Ratio's Restaurant in Clarence. It's not like home, it is home. And with all these ingredients, I kind of have a feeling what we're going to be making today, but I'm with Chef Orazio who's going to show you and tell you how to make it. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good. We're making our Asabuco Milanese. I love Asabuco. Now, how do we get started? Okay, we're going to make a seasoned water. It sounds simple, but this is what gives the dish a little complexity. We're going to put um, just some crushed black peppercorns, some fresh parsley sprigs, fresh thyme, a couple cloves of crushed garlic, some bay leaf. And we're gonna just let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay. And then while, while that's working, we're gonna take our veal shanks and we're gonna lightly season our flour. We like to season the flour just because it's a little bit more consistent. You don't have to worry about one side being too salty and another side not. Now when you season it, what are you seasoning it with? Uh, we have a salt and white pepper mixture. Okay. okay. And a veal shank is, is what part? That is from the, the leg. That's the yep, leg. Yep, the leg, the shank. And, uh, but if you, do, if you don't like veal, if you like uh, pork, pork shanks work great with this. Uh, beef shanks work great with this, and you can just change your sauces, you know, just do a slight variation. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And how hot is our pan? The pan is very hot because we want to oh, brown okay. the meat, sear the, the juices in, and caramelize the sugars inside of the, the meat itself. All right. And that's one of the most important things that we stress to our chefs is you have to get a lot of color on this because th there's a fat ring that goes around the outside, and when you crisp it up, that's where all that flavor comes out of it. You want to cook asobuco for a long time because it's not the most tender piece of meat. So it does take a little while once you get it out of the pan into the oven. Yes, we'll, we'll braise it for approximately two hours to two and a half hours. So we're going to get that in a nice hot pan. We just have a little olive oil in there. Okay. And while we're working on this, what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of olive oil inside our pan there. Okay. And we'll hit that with uh, our onions. Now, I like the pans we're using. They're from... Uh, Buffalo Hotel Supply, and it's, you know, it's not just the food quality, it's also the equipment that we use in the restaurant industry. You know, the, the pans are a little heavier, they hold the heat, so it makes our job a little easier. Exactly, and the heat distributes more evenly, so you don't get those burn marks here and there. Yeah, exactly. So what we're making here is actually called a mirepoix. The right? mirepoix, exactly. Okay. So, so I, know, I know you're a CIA graduate. Yep, 50% onions, 25% carrot, and 25% celery. Okay. And uh, so we're going to caramelize that a little bit also. The biggest thing with cooking and when you're sauteing is just caramelizing those sugars in the vegetables, the meat, because that's where all that flavor comes out of it. So you're just going to saute that off a little bit. We'll take a look at the meat here. And we can let it go just a little bit longer. Usually a, a sign when you're doing asobuco or any shank is once the blood starts rising out of the bone, okay. that's usually the, the heat pushing that through, and that's when you can flip it. Oh, okay. That's a good tip. You're going to add a little bit of tomato paste to that now. All right. And you're again, you're going to caramelize that tomato paste, all the sugars inside of the tomato paste. And that's called pincé. And that's where you pull the flavors out of that tomato product. And once that tomato product cooks a little bit longer, we're going to add a little bit of white wine to it. All right. So you can smell that aroma coming out. Oh, absolutely. And then... Once that caramelizes a little bit, little bit longer, we'll let that go, and we're going to flip the meat here. Now I'm curious, you got seasoned water there. What are we going to do with that seasoned water? It's, a, that's, it's intriguing meat. Exactly. Now at school, if you're at the CIA, you're going to use a cheesecloth and wrap everything in cheesecloth and boil it in cheesecloth and right. pull that out, which is your sachet, and then throw that out and just use your juice. Now these but are the techniques home, you use at the restaurant, though, right? Exactly. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. And I mean, a lot of it is just your basic fundamentals. And like I said, if you don't want to do veal, if you want to do pork, or a beef shank, and you know maybe in the beef use a red wine instead of a white wine, and just you, you can do anything. But if, okay. as long as you have your basics down, like anything on sautéing, sure, you can cook whatever type of meat that you want to cook, okay. whatever you're in the mood for. So what we'll do also on the veal here is I, I said that we'll the, you can see the fat along the sides, right? So we'll just stand them up, and then rotate and keep rolling them, oh, and okay. then we'll brown all that fat and get all that flavor cooked right out of oh, there. Nice. And it also makes it a little bit leaner because we'll cook the oil right out of the fat. And then at the end of the asabuco, before you serve it, you can just skim all that oil right off. Oh, good. So the nice. flavors cook in. So now we have our seasoned water. And you're going to take just a strainer, just a regular household strainer. All right. And we're going to strain this uh, liquid right into our carrots, celery, and onion. Now you're going to get all that flavor from all these herbs, but you don't have to worry about having the herbs actually in there and having peppercorns and everything. So now you're just going to stir that around. And then what we do is we, at the restaurant, we use a uh, veal stock and we'll, we'll take our bones and roast them. 
lightly and uh, make a veal stock with that. And then we cook that with a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic, white pepper, and then we tighten it up with a little bit of roux. Okay. But if you don't have that, you can just use a little bit of chicken stock, something neutral. All right. And then just tighten it up a little bit with a cornstarch if you want, or roux. And we'll add that right to that sauce. And that, this is our base sauce for there. Okay. And so we're going to add this to the... Smells good. So we're, we're good on that. So we're going to take a pan and we're going to put our asabuco, the shanks, right in there. Now, how long does this take to cook? I know you said it earlier. I yeah, just like wanna... two to two and a half hours. You want to cook it right in that sauce in the oven. Exactly. You okay. want that sauce and all those flavors to penetrate inside that meat and it will cover that and then let it slow bake at about 300 degrees for two and a half hours. Oh, perfect. Halfway through cooking, we'll take the veal shanks out and put some fresh tomato concasse on top and then finish cooking the rest of the way. So Chef, this was a really easy dish to make. You can actually put it on your table within three hours and it's great. A simple dish, fall off the bone good. I didn't even need a knife for this. Oh my God, this is my new favorite. I'm Chef Marco. Visit my friends at 9415 Main Street, Orazio's Restaurant. That's Chef Orazio. Come dine with me, Western New York.